as a fantasy reader, I've been tempted time and time again to read romanticy, so much so that I've read 43 different standalones or series, and the hard truth is that most of them were meh. And that's the case because most of them are tropey, all the characters feel all the same. So here are the ones that I absolutely love, the ones that I think are different. And I'm going to be touch basing in those that are more on the hidden gem side, so I won't be mentioning A Court of Thorns and Roses or Fourth Wing, which I think are great, but definitely well known and perhaps you've already read them. By the end of this video, I'm going to share with you five fantasy stories that I believe are great and also have great subplot romances and you will love it, I think. And we'll start in position number 10 with a story from an author that right now it's really popular because of our duology and it leans more towards the young adult side and it is also historical, heartbreaking. But this one, I think it's even more beautiful. One of those stories that once that I read it last year, I fell in love with how lush the world world. It has adult characters and I absolutely love the magic system and this is Elements of Cadence by Rebecca Ross. It also leans into the historical side, magic revolves around music and there's this different spirits of the land and it just, it is lush, it is heartwarming and the romance of the characters is built very slowly, very beautifully and I loved it. Position number nine, we have a story that it is quite funny and it's from one of my favorite authors. She is the queen of standalone and she makes here a story that it is so incredibly easy to read, it is fast-paced and it's this perfect blend of a quest with romance, with humor and with very charming characters and that is Sword Heart by T. King Fisher. This story starts with the premise that it is quite weird because we will follow this woman that suddenly finds this sword and within that sword there's this spirit of this man that is now bound to help her and we will start this quest, the love will unfold and what I loved here is that the one, there are idol characters, it's not tropey at all, there are kind of like misfits and I loved how we get to follow these characters, how the main character does not really believe on herself and we see how that unfolds, it's a very charming, very short story that I really recommend. In position number eight we have a story that it is so heartwarming. It is cozy fantasy and I loved it beginning to end it and it takes two elements that I think are so key in the romanticy side but still just makes it a story that feels unique and not tropey at all which are Faye and also these Jane Austen kind of vibe with it and we have a story that it is sweet but it is nuanced it has a kind of like a mystery and it is very entertaining and that is Half a Soul by Olivia Atwater. This author also have all the stories that are also heartwarming and very beautiful and it's the kind of story that will just place a smile on your face and will just make you happy. In the premise we'll have this girl that has an encounter that it is quite bad with the Fae because Fae are bad in this world which I absolutely love and part of her soul is ripped apart and as a result she is weird. She is not able to manage emotions properly and I thought that was so refreshing, so I don't know, So I felt so seen, not that I don't know how to manage emotions, I think, but the fact that our main character was unique and that she was hmm, weird with situations that mainly were social was phenomenal, I loved it. Position number seven, we have a story that blends perfectly dark academia with adventure, with a little bit of romance, and although it's definitely not steamy, it is reaching the hearts of a lot of readers and I personally love this story book one I adored, book two I also adore and I cannot wait for book three. It's actually one of those stories that I cannot wait for next year to arrive. Like time usually I don't want to pass but with this series I definitely do so. And that is the Emily Wilde series with the first book, Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia of Fairies. It is so charming, so happy, and at the same time, it manages to blend adult concepts with this young adult vibe in which you're reading something that you might know what is happening. So yes, in a sense, it feels tropey, but it, it isn't. It is tackled in a way that feels 
curious, it feels magical, the fae also feel like very whimsy and we are creatures that we don't really know what is happening and that is so bizarre and I love that. First one goes more towards the wintry bias, meanwhile the second one has more of an autumn side to it. In position number six we have a story that it might not lean towards the romanticy side and I actually had so many discussions with a friend here because romanticy it's actually a new genre right like it's something that it is happening right now and although new books the ones that are published now can really very helpfully have the label of romanticy and we can attach them for those books that were published a while ago some of them are taking the romanticy side and in my mind a story is romanticy is the romance it's really key and it's what it's moving the story forward. Meanwhile, a good story or a good fantasy story with romance might be fantasy romance, if that makes sense. But in here, we have a story that I really believe it's a great story, but it also has such a great romance. So it's a little bit of a weird blend. So let me know what you think. But it's one story that it is one of the most beautiful and large and beautifully written and unforgettable stories that I've read. It is definitely not for everyone. It leans a little bit more towards the purple prose, but it does not reach there. And it has so lovable characters, a magic system that is soft. You will explore different elements and it has a little bit of an adventure of mystery. But the romance is what really is driving our characters, especially from midpoint of book one till conclusion of book two, the Insatology, and that is A Strange the Dreamer by Lainey Taylor. This story, it is whimsical, it is beautiful, it made me cry, it made me laugh, and it just, it has something that screams, please savor this book slowly. It's that kind of world in which you want to get lost. And we will mainly be following this dual perspective kind of story. He discovering this land that is magical, that it is forgotten and that needs to be discovered. It has a little bit also of, we don't know what is happening. We are lost children, family found vibes. And I love that it is somehow dark so really read the true warnings before going here but i really really recommend in position number five we have a story that it's properly romantic and it's probably the steamier well for sure it's the steamiest that we will have in this list and although i can see that it has so many tropes there's one that is very popular in romantic which is enemies to lovers that i actually believe this one was managed pretty well and i fell for it and that is The Serpent and the Wings of Knights by Carissa Broadbent. This story, yes, it has trials, it's adventure, it has a pretty solid world building and I loved the idea of following these characters, paranormal romance, where we will have our girl who is the only human in this vampire world and she will fall into the midst of all of this and discover what happens. Yes, some parts were predictable, but I really think the idea of the characters hating each other was well done. And I really recommend read it in a breeze. In position number four, and we get again to the more underrated kind of side of literature here, we have a story that made me fell in love with it because the world building was great and it also had this element of our characters are writing letters and they don't know who is receiving those letters and I love that trope. I know this is actually something that is starting to happen more specifically with Divine Rivals by Rebecca Rose but it is done in a way that I just really really loved it. The world building it's kind of creepy and dark and that is the undertaking of Heart and Mercy. This is also fairly steamy and I did not expect that but it is happy. We will be following this world in which basically when you die you can come back and we have these people that is ensuring that you remain dead. We have our main character who is in the business of making sure that also people remain dead. I really loved it, read it super fast. Characters are a little bit more adult, they're nuanced, they know what they're doing, at the same time they do not, and they're sweet misfits, loved it. In position number three, we have a paranormal story that I did no know nothing about it. It was recommended by a friend and she was like, I don't usually like this type of stories and this one I am loving so you need to read it and 
I did because I'm a good friend. And you should too, because this one is actually pretty good. It's a great blend of politics and also romance. The romance side, you can see it coming and nonetheless it is great and it I've only read the first book but the world expands and it just starts to build way more and it's this story that will also have vampires and that is Blood Grace. This one surprised me because it touches on the idea of vampires and humans trying to make a treaty and other to ensure that the peace remains and in here it's not actually that the vampires are the bad ones but rather the humans and there's this idea of vampires are bad because they're doing this this and that and you see how that is debunked each of these vampires have a different magic which was really interesting in my opinion and i enjoyed pretty much the romance although also very steamy so too much for me at times position number two we have a story that it is cozy that in my opinion it's really similar to dj clune has Miss rudy and see because it touches on the idea of having a figure that comes and teaches and takes care of children a love that blossoms and it's this blend of humor and cozy elements and that is the very secret society of irregular witches this story it's sweet it is cozy it reads really 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 fast it is fairly short the romance develops in a way that you can definitely foresee but you can definitely enjoy it also has this different steamy moments and it was really heartwarming for me i loved the idea of reading about these different witches in this world in which magic is forbidden they don't know that it exists but they do so and how they get to know the trainer and how to keep that secretly it was charming incredible and in position number one before we go to five fantasy stories that i believe are great and also have great subplot romances and you will love it i think let's get into a romanticy that really it's political it's adventurous and I actually really, really enjoyed it. it. That is Bridge Kingdom. This story, it has some tropes, okay? Let's not lie here. We will have this idea of these different places in which we will need to have this forced marriage in order to have peace but each of them has a secret agenda and yes the romance propels that different that tension but the great thing here is that our characters are brutal and you see how the world develops it's really low on magic but it's really high on that politics side of the story our main characters are not necessarily lovable but are and they have that gray side to them which i loved the story that feels magical but more because of the slow burn of the characters than rather the world which you still want to discover because there's a mystery that you want to unravel and i I fell for this. But now let's get into the nitty gritty. Me recommending fantasy books that are not properly romantic. -y. I don't think so at least, but the romance was so perfect and I, I I think you will love it. The first one is a story that it's perfect if you want to believe in magic. It's kind of like that story that changes your environment, changes what you're reading and it sets you on a mood. Like that kind of, this is my new personality now. Oh, and that is, oh, oh. <laughs> the Night Circus by Erin Morgenstern. I also read A Starless Sea, was not super fan. And this one, although there's no properly, properly a romance, the romance between the characters, it's always there. The tension, I guess, and the relationship between the two at its core is a story that follows these characters as they are doing magic. It's supposed to be a tournament, although it is not like a fight if you want to imagine that, but it's rather the idea of how these different characters need to do magic in order to surpass themselves and eventually they start to really surprise each other and it is beautiful and it's whimsical I loved it. next one we have a story that really there's no proper romance on itself there's a romance there are multiple things that happen different couples but it just it is so good as a story and the pining and the suffering it is unreal and that is fireborn by rosaria munda so the aurelian cycle this story it's mainly a political story with dragons if you've read fourth wing and you loved the premise but you could do with less romance 
this is for you. Not that the romance, it's not well done, because it is. I loved it and I've suffered for these characters, but it definitely takes a second position here. This story follows this revol the aftermath of a revolution and we follow characters that are friends since they are children and they come from very different backgrounds. The decisions that they need to make are savage. There's a competition, a tournament in order to see who is the commander of the dragon fleet. Com dragons here are moody, are real characters. I cried like a baby with this trilogy. It's one of my favorites. Please read this. Also, I cannot miss the opportunity to recommend one of my favorite books of this year, a standalone that I've just recently realized that it is fairly polarizing and I can really see where this comes from. So if you don't see this for you, obviously don't take it. But I loved the idea of following this character through different periods of her life. And although romance, it's not the main element, which I guess is more solitude and empowerment and being able to decide your future and your destiny, it definitely plays an important role for a character. And it was a keystone in one part of this story. And that is The Invisible Life of Adi LaRue by B.E. Schwab. This author crafts stories that although are always kind of beautiful they are also dark or savage you can always see that element to it and in here it's that kind of story that really made me reflect and go you know outside when I wanted to feel the rain it's that kind of idea we will have this girl that it's making a deal with the devil the result it's that no one really remembers her and that is so heartbreaking. It has so elements that were charming, that made me feel seen. And really it's a book that to me was beautiful. Next, we continue with the heist story that it is perfection because it has six different characters. All of them are really charming, misfits, and I cannot say a story that has one of the best family found buys. Well, perhaps Gentleman Bastard, but it also, this one, it's solid. The romance, it's again, not the main part, but you definitely live for it as well. It's a part that is very well crafted and the author made wonders with this and that is Six of Crows Duology by Lee Berdugo. The romance, it's not what it's propelling this story which is a heist at its best, a revenge story and you will get to know those characters but these ones are so well crafted, the magic really resides on them that you will feel the slow burn, the passion. I was dying whenever each of these characters advanced or not in the relationship. I was, yeah. And last but not least, we have one of my favorite stories. I think it is wonderful because the world, it's phenomenal. The magic system, it's incredible. It touch bases on one of the tropes, if we want, of the worlds that I love the most. And it's a story that even though it's written by a very famous author, it's still not that well known. And that is Yumi and the Nightmare Painter by Brandon Sanderson. This was secret project number three last year and I love this book beginning to end, not only because of the beautiful illustrations that it has, because of the idea of having these different worlds, one that it is just illuminated in with neon lights, with purple and cyan, I guess, but the world, it's in darkness and nightmares come to life and we have this role of painters that need to paint them in order to rip apart the power of these nightmares and also we have another world in which the gods are kind of like closer to us and it just it is oy. It is kind of like a Freaky Friday kind of story where our characters that live in different places just switch places and one follows another and they need to go on with their lives learning anew the magic. That was so well done. The romance was so sweet, so young, so beautiful. I really recommend. It has a heartwarming moment. It is heart-wrenching and I think it's a standalone that it's perfection. And if you want to see more standalones, I want to leave here my list of my favorite ones. And if you like this content so far, consider joining my Patreon. We have a really cozy community with Book of the Month. We have Wheel of Time read-along, reading sprints, game nights, and I would love to welcome you.